falling ladder, the bottom of the ladder is pulled away at three foot per second. So this is going to be going this way at three foot per second. How fast is the top sliding down when the bottom is 15 feet from the wall? So we want to know how fast it's going down. So this is going to, I'm going to label this as my X and this is my Y. And they give me a couple of particulars. So they give me DX, DY, or DT, I'm sorry, equals three feet. And they want to know what DY, DT is. That's their, their question. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a Pythagorean theorem. So I know that this side is 25, and then it says when the bottom is 15 feet, so when x is 15, they want to know what y is. So I'm going to go ahead and do Pythagorean theorem, that's 25 squared minus 15 squared. That's 20. y value is 20. Now I'm going to set up my derivative, which is going to give me x squared plus y squared equals 625. I'm going to take the derivative of it with respect to time, so that's 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 0. Remember, we can get rid of all the 2s, divide everything by 2. And now my x value, recall, was 15. My dx dt was 3. I'm going to set it equal to a negative y value, which is 20. <coughs> dy dt. And this is going to give me 45 over negative 20 equals dy dt. And if I want to get the decimal, negative 9 fourths, negative 2.25, negative 2.25, and this is feet per second. Oh, second. Just want to have a spot for the, the units. Cone problem. The deal with these cones is you want to set up a proportion of the radius to the height and determine later on what you want to solve for. So the volume of a cone equals one third pi r squared h. <clears throat> and water flows into the tank at two meters cube per minute. How fast is the water level rising? So they want to know what dh dt is. That's what we're looking for here. How far, fast is the height rising? And they give us the, the dv dt. So we know what dv dt is. dv dt, in this case, equals positive 2. So I want to set up a proportion to solve for either h or r over here, and then plug it in to my volume formula, and then take the derivative. So let's see. Um, r over h, r over h equals 4 over 16. That's going to give me 1 fourth. So r over h equals 1 over 4. And I'm going to solve this for r, and then plug r in, plug h in for that, because they want to know what DHDT is. They don't want to know what DRDT is. We don't care what DRDT is. So this is going to give me R equals H over 4. So my volume formula is going to be volume equals 1 third pi times H over 4 squared times H. Now I'm going to roll with that and crisp this up a little bit. So my volume formula equals 1 third pi H squared times H is H cubed over 4 squared 16. Take the derivative of this, so that's dv dt, which I know is 2, equals, when I do the 3 times the front, that's going to cancel out, pi over 16, h squared, dh dt. And notice, that's what I'm looking for. It asks me when it's 5 feet deep, so I know that h is 5, dv dt equals 2, so this is going to give me 2 equals pi over 16 times 25 times dh dt. And I'm just going to do the arithmetic, so I'm going to multiply this by 16 over 25 pi. So it's going to give me 2 times 16 over 25 pi equals dh dt. So my final answer is going to be some weird number, 32 over 25 pi. And I can calculate that on the Casio. 25, sorry, 32 over 25 pi. This should give me a nice decimal. 0.407. Figure out what it is. Meters cubed per minute. Nope, just meters because it's the height changing. The height is just changing at meters per minute. Walking shadow. Uh, two part. <coughs> Away at a rate of five feet per second. So I'm going to label, um, make a triangle. And this part here I'm going to call X. This part here I'm going to call Y. We know his height is 6, so that's going to give me a proportion. <clears throat> and 
and my proportion is going to be 15 over x plus y equals 6 over y. And I'm going to cross multiply and that's going to give me 6x plus 6y equals 15y. Bring that over so that's going to give me 6x equals 9y. I'm going to solve this for y. It's going to give me y equals 9 over 6 which is 3 over 2. Actually when I solve it for y I get 2 over 3 because I divide both sides by 9. So it's 2 over 3x. Now I'm going to take the derivative of that. So that's going to give me dy dt. equals two-thirds dx dt. And I know what dx dt is. dx dt is how fast he's walking away. So this is changing at five. So I can put a five in for this and that will tell me what dy dt is. Equals 10 over three feet per second. And I believe that's the answer to part one. All right, part one is how fast is the shadow lengthening. So dy dt is 10 thirds feet per second. Now I'm going to find out how fast the tip is changing. So this length is changing at 10 thirds feet per second, and this length from the post to him is changing at 5 feet per second. So I think I'm just going to add those. So it's basically dy dt plus dx dt. And that's going to give me 5 plus 10 thirds. 15 over 3. That's going to give me 25 thirds for part 2. 25 over 3 feet per second. This one here is a little tricky. Angular rate of change. Airplane flies at an altitude of 5 miles from the drawing towards a point over a man. Write theta as a function of x. So I'm just going to look at this as a tangent function from Sokotoa. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to say tan theta equals 5 over x. Now it says it wants me to write theta as a function of x. So I want to get theta by itself. Is what I, I believe this to mean. So I'm going to take the, the inverse tan of both sides. So it's going to be theta equals arc tan of 5 over x. And don't forget it could also be represented as theta equals or cotan of x over 5, just to be a little tricky. Either way, either way. But I'd like to go with my first one. So I'm going to write my first one up there for part A as theta equals arctan of 5 over x. Not, not that bad, not that bad. Now part B, it says the plane speed is 400 miles per hour. Um, I guess from physics, because it's flying to the left, we're going to rate that as negative 400 miles per hour <coughs> when x is 10 miles. This is not a Pythagorean theorem problem. This is not a Pythagorean theorem problem. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this, because it says find d theta dt when x equals 10. So d theta with regard to time is going to equal, now this one's a whopper, um, the derivative of inverse tan is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared. But notice x squared is this quantity, 5 over x. Um, but then I have to find the derivative chain rule of 5 over x. And I'd like to write 5 over x as 5x. Remember if I bring that up it's going to be to the negative 1. So the actual derivative of 5 over x is going to be negative 5. And that's going to be x to negative 2 when I subtract 1. And it's going to go back downstairs, 5x squared. So this is actually going to be uh, a nested double fraction. So it's going to give me negative 5 over, it's negative 5 over x squared on top. And don't forget, I have to say dx dt. And I'm given dx dt. I'm given dx dt, which is negative. So they want to know how fast this angle's changing. That's d theta dt, given all this other information. So let me neaten this up a little bit and start doing the arithmetic. So I have d theta dt, that's the question, equals negative 5 over x squared. And I believe... They also give me when x equals 10. So I'm going to plug in a 10 for that at x equals 10. So that's going to give me 5 over 10 squared, which is 100, over 1 plus 5 squared, which is 25, over 10 squared, which is 100, or 5 over 10, which is 1 half, which is squared is 1 fourth, times the negative 400 miles per hour. The negative 400 miles per hour. Um, not a lot. That's, that's multiplied by negative 400. Not a lot of arithmetic. Um, when I do 400 times 5 over 100, that gives me just um, 4. It's going to give me positive 20 over 1.25. So d theta, basically dt equals 20 over 1.25. And notice 20 divided by 1.25 is just 16. So the answer is going to be 16 something. And theta is an angle in radians, so <clears throat> let's see here. That's going to give me 16 radians per what? Mm, per hour. Per hour. Um, this is one of these optimization problems. And I, I never really like these. They, they always kind of scare me because there's no picture I can draw like with the other problems. I like having a, a diagram so I can put my brain around what's happening. Um, but basically, there's, when 30 orange trees are planted on an acre, 
Each will produce 500 oranges. That's that's wonderful. For every extra tree, now the deal is when you plant more trees, it's going to starve those original trees a little bit. Each tree will produce 10 fewer oranges. So how many trees should be planted to maximize the yield? Um, I believe the setup for this is going to be x plus 30 times, yeah, 500 oranges. But those 500 oranges decrease for every 10 trees, okay? Uh, 500 oranges decreases by 10 oranges for every tree extra you plant. <clears throat> and now I have to foil this out. And you might make, set this up as like a total equals that, that amount. So I'm going to foil that out because I don't want to use product rule. So when I set up a, a punt square to foil this out, that's going to be 500 on the top. And x plus 30 on the side. x times 500 is 500x. 30 times 500, I believe it's 15, 1, 2, 3, 15,000. And then x times negative 10 is negative 10x squared. And that, there's my maximization. If you're noticing that, it's negative x squared. And then that's going to give me negative 300x. So when I bring this all together, this is going to give me a, a function where negative 10x squared plus 200x plus 15,000 oranges. All right? I'm going to take the derivative of that. So the derivative is going to equal negative 20x plus 200. And now this is a... A concave down parabola. So I want to find out where, where I want to maximize. See, that's that's the, the key word. Maximize the yield. So I set that equal to zero. Now give me the maximum value. I could have used um, negative b over 2a and used algebra 1 for this, but it's actually a little bit crisper to just set that equal to zero. And that'll give me negative 20x equals negative 200. So x is going to equal um, 10. So I have to plant 10 more trees to maximize the, the yield. However, it wants to know how many trees, not how many more trees are needed. So this is kind of a trick question. So I'm supposed to add that to the original 30. So the answer is going to be 40, and the, the units of measure are trees. <laughs>